In the early 2000s, the state of the fisheries on the west coast of the United States were in really bad shape. The West Coast groundfish fishery was actually declared a, a federal disaster due to the decline of several important species. And the fishermen on the West Coast were really impaired in their ability to make a living. It was a huge deal to a lot of people, so the need was obvious that something had to be done. I have fished out of Newport, Oregon all my life, and at that time you just went fishing. I didn't really understand a whole lot about the management behind things. I didn't understand how they set quotas. In the U.S., our local seafood is some of the best managed in the world because our fishermen must abide by limits on how much of a targeted species they can catch. Regional management councils set these quotas using information from the previous seasons, both from the fisheries themselves and dedicated scientific surveys, along with environmental data that may affect reproduction and survival rates. One of the big problems on the West Coast back in the late 1990s was that this information was fragmented and incomplete. The issue there was these surveys weren't always conducted annually. They were often conducted only along a portion of the coast at a time by larger Alaska-class boats that typically didn't spend much of their time fishing along the West Coast. And we weren't able to track the abundance of these species as closely as we would have liked. So in the late 1990s, NOAA Fisheries partnered with the local commercial fishing fleet aboard the smaller trawlers. By working with local boats and captains and crew that know the fishing grounds well, you're going to maximize the amount of habitat that we're able to sample. This cooperative research partnership surveys from the Canadian border down to Mexico and has continually improved the quantity and quality of data collected. Trawl nets are outfitted with multiple sensors to measure the real-time catch information together with oceanographic conditions. And on board, a wireless network connects measuring boards, scales, barcode readers, printers, and touchscreen computers to maximize efficiency, and in turn, the number of sites that can be sampled. Annually, we see approximately 635 different species we also collect about 120,000 fish links, and these are very valuable for the stock assessment. So six or 800 toes a year on the West Coast, done by industry and the science community. It's, it's awesome, and it has just steadily gotten better. While trawl fishing is well suited for flatter, soft bottoms, there's a lot of rocky, high relief habitat along the West Coast which attracts different communities of species. This is especially true along the coast of Southern California. We were being regulated on a couple of overfished groundfish, Boccaccio and Calcod. When this all began, one of the biggest problems was the trawl nets couldn't sample the habitat that these fish lived in. And after speaking with local sport and commercial fishermen, the idea was to use hook and line gear to sample these habitats. The hook and line survey, which began in 2003, involves three participating vessels that divvy up 200 predetermined sample stations. Combining these two survey methods, stock assessors have a much more comprehensive data set for the whole West Coast. The stock assessment has become more robust over time, and that's due to an improved understanding of the biology of the stock and more data. Now that we have a survey that has persisted for 20 years on this coast, we're able to look back and what we've learned is that our perception of the past is constantly changing as you get more information. The management of West Coast groundfish is in a much better place now than it was 20 years ago. We have a much better handle on overfishing and we're able to put in place the right management for the right species at the right time. Since the early 2000s, when 10 species were designated as overfished, all but one has been rebuilt, and that final species, yellow eye rockfish, is trending positively. It's absolutely worthwhile for us to do this because the research that we're doing, the information we're getting is critical to our continued existence. It's important to have a fishery that is going to continue. In fact, as one of the guys had asked me the other day on the boat, do you think there's a future in the fishery? And I said, I think the future's better now than it ever has been. I really do, and I believe that.